Season 11 mid-season patch. The worst patch in Overwatch history. TLDR, if you don't want to watch the next 20 minutes of this video, pick any tank in the game and win. If you pick anything else, you are relevant in the game and you're gambling a 50-50. This patch quadruple, quintuple buffed every single tank in the game for literally no reason other than Alec Dawson is a tank main or something. It is so horrible. Even the tank mains admit it's horrible for the game. And uh, patch has been out for two days now. And I know I'm always early with the tier list, but I'd rather be early and predict stuff and give you like an edge early in the, in the meta than to wait until the meta fully developed, you know? So things might change. If you were realistic here, we would put every tank in S tier and then everything else in F because that's how high the skill discrepancy is or the impact discrepancy. Now, obviously, I have to rate tanks against other tanks. Don't mistake me saying, oh, Orisa is a bad tank for thinking she's a bad character. She's still better than any DPS or support in the game. It's just that some tanks are even more broken than others, okay? Just keep that in mind when you see uh, Orisa, for example, in C tier. If you, if you don't read the patch notes, we'll link them in the comments. But um, in general, tanks now give even less ult charge when you shoot them or heal them. Also, the DPS passive got nerfed to only be 10%, so half against tanks. The change to Orisa is her uh, fortify got uh, increased by half, half a second. But Orisa is not a great tank compared to other tanks right now. She's unkillable, but so is every other tank. And every other tank that's meta is also good at doing more. She doesn't provide enough utility compared to other tanks. She doesn't have a lot of movement, can't really absorb a lot of damage for her team. So Orisa is CT at best. Hog is probably the weakest tank, even though he also got buffed. His pig pan does more damage. It has lower cooldown. But yeah, he's like, there's no reason to play Roadhog. Now we're getting to Cassidy. Cassidy got a significant nerf. His range damage fall off got uh, reduced. Below 30 meters, he did full damage. At 35 meters, he only did half damage. That's the damage fall off. Very deadly mid range. And that got re reduced by five meters. So the damage fall off now starts at 25 meters and ends at 30. This doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a massive deal because Cassidy's effective range is around that range. That means that if you shoot a fire in the sky that is not right in front of you, you will suddenly only deal like 60, 50% of damage instead of maximum damage. It's a massive nerf to Cassidy's damage output. That being said, he's still playable because he was so, so good before. He's, funnily enough, he's probably still one of the best DPS in the game because every, every other DPS is even worse, or most of them. It's gonna be low A tier. That doesn't mean he's good, again. DPS as a role feels kind of irrelevant right now. It just means that he's probably still one of the best choices. Wrecking Ball got a buff his adaptive shields that you can give to allies gives them more shields wrecking ball was already unkillable before so he got less buffs than other tanks uh, i'm gonna put him beat here i think he's playable he's still the best tank for stalling probably other than diva maybe monkey got a buff to his tesla cannon his, his right click the right click charges faster so you can shoot it more and his ultimate got a buff of an additional 200 hp on top so now he's like 1200 1300 basically unkillable so a massive buff to his ult. And if you thought that was broken, which it is, other tanks got even better buffs. Probably low A tier. Uh, Doomfist got a buff to his passive that lets him uh, gain health by hitting enemies. And the health lasts longer. So the, the health decay starts after three seconds instead of one. And that's a really big buff. But if you thought that was a good buff, again, I don't think he, he has a place in the meta. Other tanks are just better. Which brings me to the... The, the first major winner in this patch. Zarya got an insane buff to her bubbles. The bubble lasts half a second longer and absorbs 50 more HP. So every bubble absorbs 250 HP and it lasts half a second longer. And keep in mind, the cooldown didn't get changed, which also means you have bubble more. And if you thought counter metas are gone, they're not. The game is even more counter picky now than ever before. So if the devs wanted to fix counter picking, that's cap. Zarya is an insane pick against D.Va, depending on the map. And D.Va is probably the best tank in the game right now. So yeah, counter picking is still a thing. Zarya is insane. Uh, probably the best tank if you want to do a rush comp. She kind of does need a Lucio to move around fast. Her weakness has always been that she's kind of immobile. But insane tank, insane buff. And not even the best tank in the game. Ash got no changes. By the way, most DPS or supports didn't get any changes. This patch was literally just over buffing every single tank. Ash got a tiny bit better because Cassidy got worse. And when I say better, I mean she's like a more viable DPS pick. But she's still useless because she's a DPS. She's good against Flyers, one of the counters of Flyers. I'll put Ash actually low A tier together with Cassidy. Um, Cassidy is probably still stronger, but I see a lot more Ash now. 
Bastion is... Uh, I just realized one thing I didn't even mention and I totally forgot about is the armor changes. They also buffed armor on every tank. I forgot about that. The maximum um, damage absorption per bullet is now 10 instead of 5, which hurts characters with a very, very fast fire rate like Bastion. Um, I don't know if you've seen the clips of, of Hydron where a Bastion with a window nanoed while damage boosted loses to a single mauga it's not even funny anymore there's a clip of sk bastion gets nanoed and damage boosted and mauga just blocks and he takes no damage it's in insane i won't put him f tier uh, he's not quite hog bad again dps are relevant so you can probably play bastion and he's probably going to be a bit better in lower ranks one of the few winners uh, on dps of this patch are uh, is echo and again just because i put echo in s tier doesn't mean she's equivalent to zarya it's just that echo is one of the two dps in my opinion that are the most viable in this meta because the entire meta is the more tanks you have the better and echo's ult is copying a tank so she gets all the tank properties and tanks are op echo is also yeah quite decent against diva which is another bonus um this might be controversial i don't think genji is good but he's still better than most dps because dive is very good right now the meta on super high level is actually just ignoring the enemy tank and just running your entire team into the enemy backline and killing them with hard dive. Diva Genji is one of the few characters in the game that can go in really, really fast and deal some damage. Like a suicide bomber, right? Genji is Japanese. Kamikaze pilot, kind of. That's kind of how you play Genji, which sounds sad to say, but that makes him viable in this meta. Uh, Hanzo is absolute dog shit. I mean, uh, his, air his storm arrows do even less damage against armor. Not much to say other than he doesn't kill anything anymore. He's not good against flyers, which dominate the meta. And he, if the enemy tank runs into a Hanzo, Hanzo will lose 100% of the time, no matter which tank. Same for Junkrat. Absolutely useless. Mei can be good in rush. Like, Mei actually has utility, at least, on DPS. So the wall can actually be used to, to wall off a Sigma. I had a few games where you wall off the enemy Sigma, and that's the only way to kill the tank. So Mei, actually, I will put pretty high B tier. Uh, Reaper, the tank buster, doesn't bust tanks. Keep in mind, the tank I'm spawning here, the Reinhardt, is actually the open queue, open queue tank. Keep in mind, in roll queue, if you play roll queue, this tank has even more HP. How many shots is it gonna take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have to, I can't even. My disappointment and is, is immeasurable. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. He didn't die. He, he took another. I, okay. Sojourn. I mean, she got hard nerfed, and now, again, her main spam primary, even worse against armor. And this is the first time since Sodan released where I put a lower than 8 tier, I think. That's pretty crazy, to be honest. So, funnily enough, Reinhardt, while being buffed, actually got buffed less than other tanks. His shield has 200 more HP, it regens faster, and his charge now does 300 damage, which means you can charge kill characters like reaper which really you know that's unfair like as we just saw reaper is too good so they had to make sure the reaper dies but it's actually not that good compared to other tanks again right now b tier at best can work against mauga shield off can work against rush but there's better options in rush which we'll get into in a second uh lucio speed boost is king in dive speed boost is king in rush meta is rush and dive unless you play very long range maps where i always say this exceptions are very long range maps where you want to play sigma and poke like ilari not a must pick i think kiri and bap because of immortality abilities and anna because of anti are just as good in certain situations if not better but lucio in rush and dive is really good soldier got the hardest nerf out of any dps character like no he used to do 14 damage per bullet against armor but now he only does nine and if you're far away and you have damage fall off, that means you do like 3-4 damage to armor. He does nothing. The hardest nerf to a character that was already shit. He's useless. Don't pick soldier. Farah. Remember Farah at the start of season 11? Overpowered. What did they do to nerf her? Absolutely nothing. In fact, they made her better. They nerfed the splash damage of the boop. Direct boop attack still does the full 35, okay? And the boop goes further and boops further. For the people saying it does zero damage, no. Direct impact still does 35. There you go. And here you go. Ready for the boop. Ready for the boop. <laughs> like, Farah had the highest win rate out of any character in the game, 58% in GM before this patch. And now her win rate went up to, to 
to 70% despite the nerf. Why is that? Because Blizzard can't put two and two together. Hey, Metro from the future here. Quick update. I can happily announce that Blizzard finally managed to put two and two together. It is four. <laughs> Farah did get nerfed in the hotfix patch. Amongside other small changes, small nerfs to Zarya, small nerfs to Ramatra, uh, a pretty hefty Larry nerf, which is, I'm going to put it down one more tier. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get this video out earlier. But nothing really changed other than Farah getting a nerf to 225 HP. And if that doesn't sound like a lot to you, it is a very significant nerf to Farah, which is going to make her way, way weaker. Finally, a lot of the time when Farah is in this guy engages, she can get out and she ends up living like barely, right? When she dashes out or gets, gets behind cover, a lot of hit scans get a kill horner easier. That being said, she's not completely awful. I'm just going to move her down from S tier into B tier. Mauga. Damage to stomp damage, so when you hit them directly, it does more damage. You can one-shot like squishies now by stomping them. It's ridiculous. Tactic <laughs> overdrive duration is reduced to three seconds, but the lifesteal went up to 100% from 60, which means every single dot of damage you do, you gain back as your own HP. Plus, the damage reduction is now 40%. This is a buff against certain characters, like Rotor can't do anything against them. And Doomfist or Rissa can't really do a lot against them. But against characters like like uh, Sigma and Diva, basically a lot of the tanks can stop Mauga from dealing any damage in the three seconds Kadik Overdrive is on. Which amplifies the counter epic meta again. Because if you come out as Mauga, he's insanely OP against some tanks. And then, if, but if the enemy picks Diva or plays a Sigma well, then Mauga does nothing anymore. And then you have to swap ridiculous while being buffed less than other tanks. I'll put him B tier, mid B tier. It's a counter pick hero. I don't think you can play him against everything. Uh, Sombra is useless because she has a fast fire rate. Uh, EMP doesn't do enough damage to kill the tank, so she's pointless to play. EMP is still a good ult, don't get me wrong, you know. Like, she can work. She's like low B tier at best, maybe C tier. Like, that's debatable, but not a great character. Sigma got double the damage on the rock impact from 40 to 80. Just double the damage. So his one-shot is basically back. Like you can do the one-shot combo where you rock, left click, and then melee. He's still the must pick on long range maps because of poke. But on everything else, he's actually just worse than Zarya, Romatra, <laughs> Diva, etc. So I'll put him high A tier because he's must pick on some maps, but pretty bad on a lot of other maps. Jungle Queen got a buff to commanding shout, and her lifesteal, her bleed went up. I don't know what to say anymore, bro. Yeah, she's mi mid compared to other tanks. She's still really good. Ram is uh, easy S tier. Arguably second best tank in the game, maybe, if you play him well. His nemesis gives 300 armor now. And his pummel does 65 a punch, which means you only need four punches instead of five to kill a, a squishy. You can go into nemesis or shift and then ult and you get basically 600 armor for free. And then after your ult runs out, you have another shift up. So you have 900 armor for free, which means Ram is unkillable. I don't know, bro. This is like actually upsetting to talk about because it's so bad. <laughs> Sim Beam does like no damage anymore against armor because again, it's like a very fast ticking projectile. Uh, fast ticking hit scan ability. So mid up to high mid because I think she has played that. Like she has situations where you can play her. Torp is always a pick where you pick him and you're AFK and you can get some value. Tracer is way weaker now, I'd say. Still a really good character if you're cracked on Tracer. If you're not cracked on Tracer, she dies to tanks very easily now. Um, and she can't really damage the tanks anymore because they're unkillable. I actually don't want to put her lower than Genji because she can still be insane in dive. I think Vetra is like B tier, high B tier. Um, Vetra is like Farah, but worse. You can assassinate and get a burst kill, which is the only way to kill something. Widow, always middle of B because Widow is OP on long range maps and yada yada. I've said this like 50 million times now. Uh, Anna got a nerf to sleep dart because fuck Anna players. The thing is, if the enemy has Kiri, then Anna becomes absolutely useless because she's just going to cleanse every anti. But if the enemy doesn't have Kiri, then anti gets a, a ton of value against certain tanks. But then Diva and Zarya can just absorb the anti, so it doesn't work against them. So now the more I think about it, the more I'm going to put a low B and she can't really live if, if she gets bap solid A tier. Immortality is good because it makes people not die, you know? Like not dying is good. <laughs> Kiri value is back to insane. Suzu is a tank buff. They wanted to make it so you don't attack the tanks anymore, but the only meta is only attacking the tank or ignoring the tank completely. And Kiri is great at both because she can come in, help her team, 
hard dive with a Lucio. Or if the enemy focuses your tank, you can cleanse them, cleanse the anti, cleanse low HP, and you don't die. Drake is decent counter dive, but I don't think she will live because she just dies to tanks. So, and here we go. Diva is pro. Yeah, Diva is the best tank in the game. Her defense matrix lasts half a second longer, and you might think, oh, that's not a big deal, but it is because the recharge rate is the same. It feels like she has infinite defense matrix. I just just played a game against Diva. She just ate the entirety of my support's healing for three and a half seconds. She can eat Mauga for three and a half seconds, so Mauga can't overdrive at all. She can eat anything for three and a half seconds. And then they buff their micro missiles by 50%. Ridiculous character. Not fun to play against. She just kills everything. And again, she's great at diving. Best character in the game by far, probably. Ilari, solid pick for poke comms. On defense, good. I, I'm gonna put an A, actually. We know about Life Air and Mercy by now. They didn't get changed at all. The issue with them is that they don't deal their own damage. So they just die. Because the other team shoots as five characters and you only have three characters shooting. That being said, I want to put Mercy in low C. Because Mercy, on some maps, you can play with a Farah or an Echo. Moira B. Zen got a small buff. Transcendence is like 10% less charge you need. The thing with Zen is he's a glass cannon. And he, he just dies when the enemy rushes you and the meta seems to be rush or dive. So you just dive to Zen and he dies. And then you don't have immortality, right? You don't have the Suzu, you don't have a, a Bab Lamp, or you can't speed away with Lucio and then Zen just dies and he becomes useless. I'm not saying tank wasn't an issue before, like tank was unfun to play because everyone focuses them, but this was not the patch to fix it. It's it's just mind boggling how they thought this was a good idea in any regard. The, the idea they have is correct. Like they wanted to discourage shooting tanks. But right now, if you stop shooting the tank, they will kill you. You can't get away from them. They run into you and you die. You feel like a pawn on the battlefield. You can't do anything. And the king walks in and kills you over and over. That's all it feels like. Not, not that Blizzard would ever listen to me or anyone else for that matter. Because everyone that saw those patch notes early probably told them it was awful. And everyone now knows it's awful. So if they asked anyone, right, this wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have ruined the game. This patch is going to kill the game if they don't fix it like very fast. Yeah, if they would have listened to anyone, it would have been better. But as we stand right now, tanks do way too much damage for how tanky they are. I don't mind tanks being tanky. It's in the name. They should be hard to kill. And yes, I think it's a great idea to discourage people from shooting the tank. I think it's a great idea on paper. But... I can't do that because tanks also do more damage than DPS. And some of them do more healing than supports. What's the point of playing anything but tank? That's it. Until next time. See you when the game is dead in two days.